Welcome to the boys and girls. 801 here. Wednesday edition of the Press Box. Peter Burns, Mark Kisla, Josh Dover dressed in his uh, good plaid here today. Always looking good, good here. No show prep Wednesdays as we always do. Um, 303-297-1510. You can hit us up on Twitter at Mark Kisla or myself at Peter Burns Radio. Uh, we promoted it. We canceled it. We promoted it again. We feel like it's a uh, an audible with Peyton Manning this morning. Um, but we are joined even earlier than expected by Rockies owner Dick Monford and Rockies GM Dan O'Dowd. We know this for sure. We do know this for sure. We, we can do. confirm this now. They're in studio. Yes. And we don't know for sure whether they can win the NOS, but both these guys could win the I did or odd because <laughs> they braved the snow. Uh Dick, I'll ask you first. Uh, good morning, first, and we appreciate you guys coming on in and in kind of a new era of, uh, of of you know getting an opportunity for the fans, the media, everyone to kind of um, you know relate to you guys a little bit more. But I'll ask you: you had the bigger uh, you had the bigger commute coming in this morning. Give us give us the weather update because Chris Bianchi normally does it, and it wasn't very good this morning. So what was? It? You know, I I was born and raised in uh, Colorado, and this is nothing yet. Now, maybe it's going to turn into something, but when I got up this morning, uh, there wasn't even any snow, so not a bad day so far. You were you were the uh, the trooper. What we're going to do is we're going to tell everybody on how they can get involved uh, today. You can use the hashtag Rockies Press Box to hit us up with questions on Twitter. We're also going to be taking uh, – you guys have, you guys threw out the idea to us to say, hey, throw it out to phone calls, anybody who wants to say it probably questions there's not a lot of questions you guys haven't heard so we'll definitely take those as well too uh we'll probably take those right around 8 15 but uh kids i'll throw it to you and let you uh start the uh okay first base clock hour first baseball and business question to you dick um you guys can open the gates and turn on the sunshine and and you'll get 2.5 million fans through the in the joint for the season and that's a good business to be in and that's you must be doing something right because people enjoy the experience Knowing that two million plus is virtually guaranteed, what's your then motivation for winning? Well, first of all, <clears throat> I got a bunch of people sitting at uh, 20th and Blake that would tell you two million is not a, a laid out. There's a lot of work that goes on to do that. Uh, we do have a great stadium. Uh, we're sensitive to our prices. I think our prices are like 29th out of 30 teams. Uh, but we are motivated to win. Uh, you know, last year when we started playing poorly, you could see the attendance drop. But, it, you know, it's not just about dollars and cents. It's about winning, and we want a championship. Uh, we have a lot of people that dream about it. Uh, you know, we went through 07, and it, was a, it seemed like it went in two seconds. But uh, that's our goal. That's our goal every year. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people don't think I want to win. I, I, I tend to think I'm the most competitive guy in the world and uh you know uh when we lose it's it's hard on me it's hard on everybody and uh so we got every you know every this off season we're doing everything we can to figure out different ways of winning we we happen to think we have a lot of talent we happen to think we've got a lot of young talent we know we have a lot of talent in the minor leagues and some of it takes a little bit of time, uh, but there were some mistakes made last year, and we're uh, trying to make them uh, better this year. Okay, so I'll follow this way. Um, I, I, I've never believed that you don't want to win. I guess my question would be, do you have the resources to win? And when you see the Dodgers go out and spend $150 million on a pitcher, regardless of whether you think Zach Grinke is an ace or you think he's a number three, can you afford to win? Well, you know, I there were a lot of teams last year that got into the playoffs that didn't have $230 million payrolls. In fact, not one team that was in the playoffs had that big a payroll. So that doesn't guarantee you're going to get there. We're a scout, we're a scout and develop team. Uh, it's worked before. It's worked for a lot of teams. Just the fact that you put an all-star at every position doesn't mean you're going to win. I think we've seen that in a lot of different sports. Um, so, yeah, we, we have the resources to win. Uh, you know, the TV deal is becoming a big deal, and uh, however you want to hash out what L.A. and Anaheim got on their TV deal, it's going to be double, maybe even triple of what we would ever get just because of our population. But that's all right. I mean, we're not, we're not worried about that. We think we can scout, develop, and win here. Does And I hear that a lot, and a lot of people go, well, with the TV deals, with the money flowing in, 
And a couple years ago, Deadspin had an article where some of the financials got leaked from some of the smaller market teams, Pittsburgh, Kansas City. And it showed that really you didn't have to put that much money in there because the TV deals, you got the money back. So there's there's a lot of people uh, and fans that had said, do, do they want to win? Is it just a situation where you look at a bank account and go, hey, I tell you what, times are good and it doesn't matter because it's sunshine, obviously not today. But does that bother you when you do hear the chirping from people of saying, well, this this front office, this, this team, this ownership group doesn't truly want to win? Well, you know, I, I think the fact is if, if you win 98 games, then all of a sudden everybody thinks you want to win because you won 98 games. We lost 98 games, so why did we lose 98 games? Well, you know, Dan did a bad job, or Jim Tracy did a bad job, or injuries, or the Monforts don't want to win, or whatever it is, there's got to be a reason for it. You know, to go back to if, if, it's, if, if it's all about money and just trying to make a bunch of money, we don't have to have an $85 million payroll. We can come in at 30 or 40 if that's what it took. And if 2 million people are going to pile in there no matter what, why would we be at $85 million? I mean, $85 million is a stretch for us, and uh, it'll be probably that or maybe a little higher this year. Uh, so w- why aren't we at 30? I mean, it's easy to do. You could put 25 guys out there making the minimum. That's $12.5 million. So, I mean, we don't have to do that. We've signed Tula. We've signed Cargo. We extended Todd because we wanted, you know, we thought there was enough left in him and that we didn't want to come to the situation where, he became a free agent. So, I mean, we try to keep the guys that we have. Uh, you know, we signed De La Rosa a couple years ago um, for $11 million, which is tough to do with a pitcher in, uh, in Denver. But, um, you know, we, we, we try to keep the talent we've got. And like I said, we have done a good job of scouting. Uh, our development club last year out of six clubs, we had four of them make the playoffs. Two of them got to the finals, and one of them won it. We've got a lot of great players there. The, the future's bright. I mean, we do need uh, some players next year to take that next step and play a little better, and, and we need some young pitchers to come along. But, you know, the fact is we want to win. Okay, so now I'm going to have you pass the mic to the man who has to execute the $85 million payroll. I was enjoying Dick just talking here. Yeah. <laughs> this is great because we're having you guys share a mic like you're on the front, like you're Metallica at a concert. Yeah. Like having, If you guys can both speak into it at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to know, is it a coincidence you guys work right across from a medical marijuana? Yeah, well, thank well, you. Well, no, it's, it's, that's for the benefit <laughs> of our listeners primarily. Okay. Well, we're called dogs a lot of times as well, too, on this show, so you can go either what, way. What well, do Mark's open? done that to me all year. <laughs> it has been. Uh, okay, the gloves are off now. Do you read the Denver Post daily? And and how does that... Uh, daily? Well... Maybe his dog does. Well, I'll ask you, Dan. Uh, that relationship of reading that every day. Um, This year was a little tough. Uh, you know, I think what Jay and Nick do for me is is I think they point out things to me. You know, I, you know, as corny as this may sound and realistic as this may not seem to some people, is that, you know, I, I think in every criticism, quite honestly, Peter, there's a lot of truth to it. You know, I'm a pretty good self-evaluator. I'm harder on myself than, quite honestly, Mark can ever be on me, though that might be debatable to my wife. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the reality is in, in every sort of criticism, I think there's some truth. I think there's some growth. I think there's some opportunities to get better. Um, you know, I don't expose myself to it all the time because I think it's get to a point of diminishing returns because you got to stay focused on, you know, the task at hand. Ooh, um, don't get on Twitter. I don't use Twitter or Facebook. I, I, I'm overwhelmed <laughs> just with email. And so, uh, but I think Jay and Nick do a really good job of pointing out things to me that I should read. And, you know, quite honestly, I, when I read critical things, I try to look for seeds of truth in them to where, you know, I think a lot of the things Mark, you know, wrote this past year were probably very accurate. Um, you know, I think when we lose 98 game, the buck stops with me, not with Dick. Uh, there's got to be a, some break in our process, something we didn't do properly that reflects that. And ultimately, at the end of the day, I'm in charge of that. And who better to take that than me? Okay, so you, 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 you tried the bold experiment with the piggyback rotation, sure. the four-man rotation, the strict pitch count. Yeah, I don't think, though, Mark, that was really ever understood completely why we did that. Okay, why did, okay then, then, the way I'm going to ask that is, was that a function of a budget, and how much was that a function of altitude or whatever? Yeah, 
Um, well, the, it's two questions you just asked there. So which one do you want me to answer first? First, uh, because you can't spend $150 million on a six-year contract for a starting pitcher and have an $85 million budget, or it'd be very, very hard to do that, uh, did you have to look for ingenious or creative ways to, 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 to make a pitching rotation? Well, first of all, I think it, you know, as you try to tie the two answers together, I, I don't think that would be a really wise way to spend money, even if we had a $150 million payroll. I think that we looked at 20 years of a history now, though not a long history. We do have 20 years of data now that reflects playing in Coors Field. And I think if, if, if you look at it, it had distinct patterns to it. And so I think the reason, you know, we did what we did is, you know, really – trying to narrow it down to three and three only because I can't remember anything beyond three, is one, is there a better way to do this than the way we've been doing it? That was the first one. Number two is that, um, you know, once we made the Abaldo trade, we knew that our pitching was going to be young and inexperienced. And if you looked at the history of the club, breaking in young, talented, inexperienced players going all the way back to Jamie Wright and John Thompson, and there's a long list of them, other than, you know, Jason Jennings, who was the rookie of the year, it's been real problematic trying to figure out a way to get those guys over the hump. So we were trying to look at, is there an easier way to break in younger, inexperienced, you know, starting pitching in a way that might create some foundation for them moving forward? Foundation for success and Correct. confidence, is that yep, fair to say? Absolutely. Or was it the opposite side, too, that some of these guys, after a certain amount of pitch count, so you know what, I can't work through that issue. There is there is a quick hook, and it doesn't give me an opportunity to continue to grow. Well, you know, again, I'm not going to sit here and say we, we have anything close to all the answers. But I will tell you, over 20 years of history, the OPS, you know, you know when you take slug and on base and you add it together, the third time through the lineup historically in our ballpark makes a Jamie Carroll in his prime hit like a Brad Hopp in his prime. And that is not reflective, put in perspective, just of our pitching. If you look at anybody who threw 55 or more innings and started somewhere between two or three games a year in our ballpark, I'm talking about the Greg Maddox's, Randy Johnson's, Kurt Schilling's, Clayton Kershaw's, Matt Cain's, Tim Lincecum's, Derek Lowe's, I can go on and on and on. That was consistent for them. So I don't think it was just reflective you know, of, 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 the, of what we tried to do just with our own pitching. And the third thing is, is that we tried to do is, is there a better formula that we could create for sustained health and performance? Because if you look historically at the history of the franchise, you know, we've had very, very difficult time sustaining those two things with our starting rotation. 303-297-1510. You can hit us up on Twitter at Peter Burns Radio at Mark Kisla uh, and use the hashtag Rockies Press Box because there's there's a ton of questions uh, that guys uh, they, they want to know that they, they feel like even knuckleheads like uh, myself and sometimes kids don't ask those questions. So we're going to open that up to some of the callers as well too on the uh, other side. And we've worked with the guys over at PurpleRoad.com. We're going to kind of. Um, have a little bit of a crowdsourcing and, and work with those guys that, that live, breathe, eat, sleep. Every move that you make uh, from a, a high school kid or whatnot, they, they break it down probably even better than we do day to day. So we'll throw it out to those guys as well, too. You can get on the phone lines right now. I think we got a couple open lines. 303-297-1510. Again, hit us up on Twitter, at Peter Burns Radio, at Mark Kizza. Kiz, you okay? We don't... Uh, I love the weather, right? Okay, a little bit of snow on the other side. You're listening to the Brass Box. Dick Bonford, Daniel Dowd in studio on Mile High Sports.